Hey, Dr. Barrett St. George here with Hearing and Balance Doctors. Today I'm going to talk a little bit about how we hear. Um, I'm going to delve in a little bit into our auditory system. There's different parts of our auditory system or our hearing system, and they each do specific things in order to help us hear and process sound with our brain. We make sense of sound up here but there's multiple steps along the way. So let's get in on that. First, we need to understand what sound is. Sound is tiny pressure fluctuations in the air. The air around us is filled with molecules. We can't see those molecules, but they each have their own comfortable resting space. One particular molecule in the air is resting right here. And if we zoomed in far enough, we could see that molecule kind of wiggling a little bit. That's, it's just, it's grooving along, it's happy. But if there's a disturbance in the air somewhere, such as my own voice, I'm creating pressure escaping my mouth and it's influencing that little tiny molecule in air. And it'll cause that molecule to move away from its resting position back and forth. This is sound. So when those tiny pressure fluctuations in the air, i.e. sound, reach our ear, we're having a funneling effect. So our outer ear that you can see here, it funnels sound into the ear canal, and that allows us to gain a sensation in the air around us. So this picture right here is our entire peripheral auditory system. We have different parts of the peripheral auditory system. The outer ear here is what we typically see. You've heard the term pinna before. You've heard the term lobe before. The lobe is the only portion of our outer ear that's non-cartilaginous. It's floppy. Everything else has cartilage in it. And we have the ear canal here. Most people's ear canals are not this straight. Most people's ear canals are curvy. We have two bends in the ear canal. And each ear canal is unique. Some people have circular ear canals. A lot of people have oval shaped ear canals. Some people have very narrow ear canals. The more narrow and curvy your ear canal is, the more likely you may experience a wax accumulation problem. In which case, uh, if you came to an audiologist, we can help you remove that wax for you, no, no problem. So what else we see here beyond the external ear is the middle ear. The middle ear has two main parts. It's got the eardrum, the tympanic membrane, if you will. Tympanic means drum-like in Latin. So it's the membrane that acts like a drum. When those tiny pressure fluctuations, those sound waves hit the tympanic membrane, we all of a sudden have mechanical energy. It's moving back and forth. And what happens is these little bones that are connected to the eardrum, those start to move as well. They articulate with one another. And it enhances that mechanical energy enough to start to move fluid within the inner ear. This whole purple part right here is our sensory organ of hearing, as well as our vestibular apparatus. What does vestibular mean? It means equilibrium and balance. So this curly Q snail shaped portion right here is the cochlea. That is our hearing portion of our inner ear. And then these semicircular canals and this area right here is the vestibular or equilibrium portion of our inner ear. Okay. Let's talk a little bit more about our hearing portion. There are thousands of sensory cells in our inner ear and they ultimately transmit that sound to our hearing nerve, which connects to our brainstem and then allows us to hear with our central hearing system. If we zoom in on that curly Q cochlea, we can unravel that cochlea right here. It's unraveled. Remember, it's filled with fluid. The fluid inside the cochlea is kind of like um, cerebrospinal fluid. The sensory cells, the thousands of sensory cells inside our cochlea, they're called hair cells. They are called hair cells because they have these little stereocilia protrusions at the top of the cell. 
and they look like little hairs. They're very delicate, but the way they move in response to that fluid mechanical movement um, allows us to hear, essentially. The, the, the movement creates a chemical reaction in the neuron. We have neurotransmitter being released out of the bottom of the hair cell, and it excites the auditory nerve fiber connected to that hair cell. So excite, it means you increase the firing rate. All of these hair cells, all of our thousands of hair cells are connected, individually connected with a, uh, a auditory nerve fiber. And once we have this neural activity routed through the auditory nerve fiber, it's coming up and hitting our brainstem. Where in the brainstem does the auditory nerve hit? It hits at the medulla. I'm sure you've heard that before, medulla. It's towards the bottom of our brainstem, but the like the top portion of the medulla is really where that hearing nerve hits. And then we have, as we go up the brainstem, we have different sections of thousands of neurons, each designed to process sound. These neurons, they have different firing patterns, different rates of activity in response to stimulation, you have a, the onset response, the offset response. You have a, a steady state response, a buildup response. You have a chopper-like response. All of these neurons do different things to uh, retain the fidelity of that signal along the way to the cortex. So um, once we get to the cortex, you can see here there's different parts. We have the, this section here is the temporal lobe. And then we have the frontal lobe, parietal, we have the occipital lobe. These are all different parts of the brain that do different things. Temporal lobe, the back portion, actually um, is involved in auditory processing. We have this section right here, primarily in the brain, that's processing sound. We have the first area of the cortex that receives ascending auditory sensory information. That's the primary auditory cortex. Anything beyond that, getting that secondary information, processing things a little bit more finely. That's secondary auditory cortex. It allows us to do higher order levels things like comprehension, spatial separation, localization, all these things. We're really making sense of that in the secondary areas. I hope you enjoyed today's lecture and uh, we will be getting back to you soon. Thanks so much for joining us.